Hi everybody, another video from me. And today is something a little bit different. In my last video, which I wanna thank you guys so much for watching, where I talked and I answered more about questions about um, my particular mental illness and how journaling helps me, I got a lot of questions. A lot of people are not uh, just a lot of questions about um, journaling with obsessive compulsive disorder and hypographia and what that means for me. I'm guessing that not very many people, when, when, you, when you think of obsessive compulsive disorder, people think of like number counting, obsessive number counting, or obsessive hand washing, fear of germs, obsessive cleaning the house. And when we talk about obsessive compulsive disorder, it's not just about Oh, I'm a little OCD about things. No, it's something that controls everything that you do all day long at all points during the day. It's not a small, well, I like to keep a clean house and keep things tidy. That's not obsessive compulsive disorder. That's just being a clean person, which is great clean and tidy person. I wish I was more clean and tidy. I'm kind of like a creative chaos kind of person with a hodgepodge of, you know, I, I wish I was more, I've tried so hard to become more minimalistic and condense and just only have the things around me that I absolutely need. And so far I need them all. <laughs> But anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit more in depth today about some questions that I got from the last video regarding journaling. Um, and because I'm not very good at just sitting here and answering the questions and then not getting sidetracked, I decided I actually journaled about it. And so I figured, you know, why waste it? I'll just read what I wrote and maybe it'll help answer some questions. Um, definitely help answer some questions about me. A lot of people have asked how I function. Like, I write so much. Well, how do you do it? How do you write so much in a day? It's not because I want to. Um, I, my husband cooks. My husband does a lot of the cleaning too. I write. I do things with my kids. I mean, I do things. I'm not always, you know, with my head buried in my journal. But there are some times when I should be doing other things that I physically, emotionally, mentally cannot because of the overwhelming compulsion to write. So I'm gonna read you a little bit about what I journaled about it. Now I wasn't trying to journal this as like a script or anything, but it just, uh, when I write sometimes, just like whenever you write, anybody writes, it just sounds better when it comes out of your pen than it does out of your mouth, you know, just shut off the hip. So here we go. In my new documented journey, cork folio. Okay. So I'll do a video soon about my obsessive writing. Sometimes I don't even have anything to write, but I've got to write. Even when I wanna be doing something else, the need to write still overpowers everything else. To write, to write, to write. I've always got to write. Even when I have nothing to write about, the act of writing, the holding the pen, moving it along the page as the paper draws the ink flow down into wet lines. I didn't really write that very much today because of being at the MRI with Eile, and then just a little here and there. Maybe I'll give the lambing a little rest again once Sierra Miss takes over. I should have rinsed out and prepped the feed, but oh well. So when my pen is kept at an upward angle to the paper, the line is very manageable and crisp, just as I like it to be. But when I angle my pen lower, more flat to the paper, it's a thicker line, more like a medium nib. So it's almost like I made my own zoom nib. So if I want to keep my writing more tight, I just keep it angled higher, not so hard or any trouble at all. Maybe I can even write smaller with greater success because I write pretty big. I don't want to write big, but when you're writing really fast, it just, that's how it comes out. 
Maybe on my video, I'll talk about how weird I am about line width and wetness too, how everything about the act and desire to write is both beautiful and overwhelming as well. Sometimes I can put my pit down and do other things and I'm just fine. But other times I'm swinging in a quick high or a quick low, just overwhelmed and I have to write no matter what. Everything about my writing experience affects everything about me too. There must always be time to write and there is always something to write about even when I can't think of what to say. It's the act of writing. Sometimes that's when I'll, I'll have a, a song that's stuck in my head. So the only way to get it out of my head is to write the lyrics, all the lyrics of the song. And sometimes I'll write it over and over again so I can memorize the song and then it'll be out of my head. Sometimes I write quotes from some of my favorite books and like pages and pages of these books because the need, the obsessive need to write is so powerful, but there's nothing left in my head. It's the act of writing. For some people, the release of stress, the compulsive need of drugs or of cleaning or of counting or any number of other things. For me, the compulsion is to write and to write everything. Because I write so much, it has to be enjoyable for me. The whole process, each time I put my pen on the paper, is like when a smoker takes his first drag of a cigarette or when a coffee lover has their first drink of coffee in the morning. It's a compulsive act that I'm performing day in and day out because of what because what's in my brain won't be quiet. It gets very loud in here. Conversations get twisted and inverted when I'm talking to myself and talking to others. Too much going on in my brain from the moment I close my eyes to the moment I open them back up. If it builds up in my head, that's when I practically burst. I lose my temper over nothing. I become very overly emotional. I cry when I should laugh and I laugh when I'm angry. There's a buildup of pressure inside me, like shaken wine that's corked in a bottle. When it explodes, that's when the Thorazine shots and acute mental hospital stays happen. I already have a child that shares my broken brain, unfortunately, so I can't allow myself to get to the point of the cork popping again. So there are self-soothing, stemming exercises. I wring and rub my hands together. I have a facial tick with my mouth that is always present. It gets painful and maddening when my state of mind gets bad. If you've been watching my videos for any length of time and you've seen me like not speak for a minute, then you'll notice. I can't help it. It's, it's a tick. Sometimes it's worse. Sometimes it's not so bad. It all depends on my emotional levels. It usually gets worse towards the evening and at night because of just the pressure and the buildup from the whole day. Um, but yeah, that's what this is. <laughs> okay. Jaw clenching, rocking, all of it. I have meds I can take to help, of course, a low dose of Thorazine being one of them, but really nothing takes this part of my OCD away. So sometimes writing isn't fun or enjoyable for me. And that is the truth. I need people to understand that filling up all of these journals all the time, I'm not just filling them up to fill up journals and make videos about them and to fill them up and line them up neatly on my shelf. I fill them up because I don't have a choice. I have to write, even when I don't want to write, even when I'm sick of writing, I have to write. I, there, there's no other way to put it. So I love writing so much, but I also hate writing so much. There are tear stained pages all through all of my journals. I scribble angrily and destroy pages sometimes too. And here comes one of the worst parts. It affects how I'm a mom and a wife, which I already mentioned. I don't cook or clean like I should. I berate myself in my journals for it too. When the compulsion is on me, I can't not write. When I don't have a notebook or a pen, or when I'm not allowed one, as has been the case a time or two, like when I've been in acute care, I write with my fingers on tables or hard surfaces, just as if I were writing in a book. When that's not possible, when I'm grocery shopping or actually doing house chores, I listen to an audiobook with noise canceling headphones and I try very hard to complete the task that I need to complete. And when I'm finally able to write again, it's like being high for a few minutes or longer. Sometimes when I've done something else or when I'm doing something else, 
and I want to be writing, but I'm not writing. Even just holding my pen in my hand, fidgeting with it, but just not just any fidget toy, but my pen. Holding my pen is a comfort that kind of quells the compulsion when I can't, when I'm, when I'm having to mom or I'm having to wife. Like I'll usually, if I have a shirt with a pocket in it, I'll have my, you know, one of my pens in my shirt pocket. So at any time I can pull my pen out and I've got my pen in my hand. Yeah. Uh, Audio books to complete the task that I need to complete. And when I'm finally able to write again, it's like being high for a few minutes or even longer. My kids and husband all know this about me. It's what they're used to. I write during movies, watching TV with the family. I write during meal times. I write while I homeschool my kids. I pull over when I'm driving if the need to obsessively write takes over me. But I listen to audiobooks while I drive myself, which helps. I write while my husband drives. From sunup to sundown, I love and I hate writing. So there you go. I actually thought I would be a little bit more emotional when I was reading this um, because this basically explains a lot of the questions that I get over and over again about how I write so much and what I write and where I write and why journaling is what it is for me. Um, like I just started this journal on February 1st and I have about it has 160 pages and I have 20 pages left and I'm not filling it up with hogwash just to fill up a journal. I am putting my spirit and my soul and everything that's in here, every little thing that's in there in my journals. And if it's not in here and I still have the obsessive need to write, then I write song lyrics. I write quotes, long quotes, poetry, um, some of my own poetry. I write poetry from some of my favorite poets. Um, I frequently write um, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Um, I write from the books that I'm reading. Um, I had at one point a separate journal just for transcribing books and songs and poems and so I had my normal regular journal but when the obsessive need came on me so much that it was just maddening and it's like I don't want to write I want to just I want to go to sleep or I want to do this or I want to do this or I want to read my book but I don't want to write but I have to then I would grab that journal and that's what I would start transcribing things into because the you know when I'm able to are you a Harry Potter fan? You, you know Dumbledore's pensive. When Dumbledore talks about sometimes he just has too much in there and he has to use his wand and he takes out what is causing too much in there and he puts it in the pensive and he saves it for later. That's what my journals are. My journals and then the journal where I'm just transcribing, those are my pensives. I have too many thoughts in my head and the thoughts never stop. And that's a part of my obsessive compulsive disorder too, intrusive thoughts. Um, and the intrusive thoughts will get louder and louder and louder and louder and louder until they are bright flashing neon signs and I can't do anything until I get them out of my head writing. Um, I am and I'm on great meds. I've been on great meds for a couple of years but there are some meds that I've needed to wean off of over the past few months for my health um and one of those was one of the meds that kind of made this more manageable for me but if I want to stick around and be here for you know a few more years with my family then I needed to wean off of that because it was damaging my liver um, so now my, I just have to deal with it. I have to use the coping mechanisms and the coping strategies 
that I know and that I'm used to and I have to use them to use them until they're threadbare and when those are threadbare then I have to find a new journal because that's what happens threadbare is when my journal pages are are gone when they're all done and I have to archive my journal and put it on the shelf and then there's the jaw clenching and the and then the hands and I'm not able to I'm not able to function until I've already picked off that new journal from my shelf and started and starting immediately and it's just lines and lines and lines after lines after lines and the reason why I enjoy using fountain pens so much is because it doesn't hurt when I write before when I would journal before journaling became so important to me I would journal for a short amount of time and then I had to stop because my hands hurt my hand hurt when I discovered fountain pens that's when that floodgate opened um yeah so early in the morning from when I wake up 7 30 8 o'clock first thing I do is I roll over and my journal is always right next to me I've either slept with it under my arm under my pillow somewhere where I can be touching it because I have to I'm a 40 year old woman and I have to go to sleep with my journal and I wake up and I grab my pen and the first thing I do is I start writing. I write as the sunshine starts to filter in through my window. Then I will go downstairs to have my coffee while I'm drinking, while I'm making my coffee. I write while I'm drinking my coffee. I write and I will write obsessively until my children wake up and then I will make them breakfast and then I write. And while they're doing their schoolwork, I write. Sometimes I'll try to wash dishes or do house chores and sometimes I'm able to get them done. I, my kids know when I put on my headphones and I'm doing house chores, leave me be because if you, if you interrupt me, then I'll lose my mojo and I won't be able to finish. They're used to that. Um, and some of you may be feeling kind of sorry for my kids right now. I feel sorry for them too, but you know, I could be doing drugs. I could be, you know an alcoholic. I could be a lot of things. I just have a broken brain and I write all the time. That's what I do. So I hope this video has cleared that up for you finally. I hope you can finally understand that this is opening up like this is kind of scary. Um, I mean, I've opened up little bits and little bits and little bits, and it's become sort of snowballing lately to open up even more. So now, like, I've opened. This is my obsessive compulsive disorder. This is not my bipolar one disorder. That's a whole nother video. And someday, if you guys are interested, then yeah, I'll do another video about my bipolar one disorder and on how that affects me. But this is my OCD and hypergraphia. And so... I hope now that you understand a little bit more about me and a little bit more about why journaling and the act of journaling and everything about it is so important to me. And yeah, so thanks for much. Thanks so much for watching. If you've made it this far, you deserve a cookie. <laughs> if you could give me a like or a thumbs up, that would be great. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. I would love for you to kind of join the whole family here where I talk about my broken brain and the things that help me deal with my broken brain. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you found the content helpful and useful and you want to help my channel out, then I would encourage you to visit my Ko-Fi link in the description below and leave me a little tip in the tip jar. Let me know I did a good job today. Um, once again, thank you so much for watching and I wish you guys awesomeness and greatness and go be kind to people because you never know what people are dealing with. You never know. <laughs>